welcome to worship through Peace Lutheran Church. We're live streaming on this Sunday, June 7th. It's Holy Trinity Sunday. And early Christians spoke about God, one God in three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It was a way to describe our God of mystery uh, in words that talked about God's actions as creator, as redeemer, as sustainer. This is Holy Trinity Sunday, and we enter into worship today to worship our God of mystery with a sense of awe and wonder. Can you get in touch with that awe and wonder in God's presence today? It's been another uh, difficult week throughout our country as tens of thousands of people have um, expressed anger and fear and grief at uh, police brutality and at racial injustice through protests that have swept our nation and also our, our world. Um, Jesus says in our gospel reading today in, in Matthew 28, remember I am with you always even to the end of the age. That's a words of promise and a grounding that we all need today um, in our world as so many things um, seem to be swirling around us. We are never alone. There is a movement for justice going on in our country, um, and I encourage you to be listening to that and participating um, in that active reflection and acts of justice as God calls you to. Today we celebrate uh, graduates connected to Peace Lutheran Church and Peace Community Center. It is a, a milestone moment for them. More about that. Uh, in a little while, and it's an opportunity for us today uh, to pray for each of those individuals, and if you will see the link sent out in the email, you'll see the list of all those people graduating from high school and uh, community colleges uh, and, and college. Please lift them up. Today, we've got two of our graduates, Josiah Anderson and Kamari Carroll, who will be sharing faith reflections as our sermon message. Thanks be to God for them. Uh, please also check out in an email that we sent out a video from our Hilltop Scholar, Destiny Bergevin, who talks about the, how the, the Peace Community Center has helped, been helpful on her journey toward graduation. We had scheduled Confirmation Sunday for Lily Brooks Walker today. She and her family have decided to postpone that until a time when we can all be together in person to celebrate and, and support her. And so we're going to do that. That will be happening later on um, in some months. And as we begin today, uh, we acknowledge that uh, Peace Lutheran Church is located on the traditional homelands of the Puyallup people of the Coast Salish Nation. We lift up the vision that God has given us to be a diverse community of faith, multi-ethnic, multi-generational, right here in the hilltop of Tacoma, a community that is spirit-filled, compassionate, healthy, reconciled, and just, and it is good to reflect on each of those vision points as God draws us into the future. We will be sharing Holy Communion today, so this is a reminder to you if you would like to share wherever you are and find bread and some grape juice or wine. You might get, get those together for later on in the service. God is the one who is bringing us together even though we are physically apart. So we commune together through the power of the Holy Spirit today. And it is good to respond to God with our offerings of our very selves and our treasure is part of that. We're grateful for the uh, strong offerings of the church through this time of the coronavirus and we encourage that to continue. You can send your offering to the church office. You can do a, an online offering at the church website or set up electronic giving through Demish in the church office. Today, right after this service, somewhere around 11 o'clock, Malcolm Carroll and I will be present on Zoom for a Bible study, a time of dwelling in God's word of hope. We'll be looking at Psalm 46 together. If you did not get a link for that, please email me and I'll get you that so that you can join in right after this service. Wanted to let you know, um, a couple of our staff people are taking time off right now. Uh, Brendan Nelson had a death in the family, and so he's going, he's off today and off several days into this week. 
our Pastor Jay Bates is on an academic study leave this week until Saturday. Please keep them in your prayers. This Wednesday from noon to one is the community Bible study looking at the scripture readings for next Sunday. It's a Zoom thing that I lead. So let me know if you would, if you don't have the link to that and you would like to participate. We have an opportunity through Bread for the World to contact our legislators in support of legislation uh, to help vulnerable people in our world. Nutrition programs in the United States and nutrition and health programs globally. Craig Cogger has made a short video to describe that. You can click on that if you got the email from the church and see the information sheet that we sent out that describes how you can act. As I've been mentioning, this is a time for deep reflection and action for justice. And if you are looking for ways to engage in anti-racist work, Julia Kagochi shares a document that we included in the email. Check that out. There are some ideas for you there. Sunday, June 21st is Father's Day. We will be putting together a Father's Day slideshow to honor the fathers in our lives. Brendan Nelson will be doing that. If you would like to include a picture of a father in your life, please email peacevideos at peacetacoma.org and it will get into the picture slideshow. Or if there's a picture that you've submitted in the past for a video, please let Brendan know and he will include that. We have a reopening task force that has started to meet at Peace to talk about steps needed for the day uh, that we will begin to reopen in-person ministries at Peace. It will be in stages and we're working that all out. We are trying to follow our directives from the state and health departments uh, and we are very much bearing in mind our need for safety and for care for the most vulnerable among us. Will Jones has some items to donate, uh, a single bed headboard, footboard, wicker side table, couch pillows. If you are interested, let me know. They're going quick. If you don't let me know by the end of this week, he's taking them somewhere else. Um, next Sunday, June 14th, we're thanking programmatic year helpers and uh, people who have le led in this past year in worship, and we are going to pray blessing at the end of the school year on all students. So know that that's happening. Our Zoom conversation after worship will be from the Future Directions team, an update and a conversation about where God might be leading this church into the future. Tomorrow, there is a community interfaith drive-in prayer gathering called Breaking Through Barriers of Race, Poverty, and Fear. Our mayor is helping to pull that together. It is tomorrow from 6 to 7 p.m. It's a drive-in service, Cheney Stadium parking lot. And I want to say, as I said last Sunday, how can I, as your pastor, and how can the church be supportive to you in this time um, with the coronavirus with all that's going on in our nation and world, please reach out, let me know um, so we can better connect with you and, and care for you. And thank you for your care for the people in our community. We send the bulletin and the announcement um, sheet out every Sunday before Sunday in, uh, it, with an email. And that is how you get the lyrics and the order of service please uh, let us know if you're not receiving those. And if you are new to peace, welcome. It will, it's, a, it's an honor uh, to know that you are connecting through uh, this electronic means today. And if you'd like me to follow up with you, please put in the, the, com the comment section that you'd like me to email you or connect. It's time to worship God now. Uh, with, we'll begin with songs of praise. Thanks be to God for you, Twyla. Uh, let us sing together. Yes. 
Oh. 
is a God of peace. And when we say peace, peace Lutheran Church, peace community center, this is peace that is more than the absence of violence, the absence of more, it's a, of war. It's the presence of God's love, of justice, of community, of health and wholeness. The peace of the Lord, the peace of the Lord be with you all. Please take a moment now and greet any, anybody who's around you with God's peace. Type in an offering of peace to somebody um, in the comments section. Text somebody and say, God's peace to you today. God's peace. people of God, coming from uh, Presiding Bishop Michael Curry and Presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton from the larger Episcopal and Lutheran churches. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. This is the Old Testament reading. Reading from Psalm 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy of you and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little more than God and crown them with glory and honor. You've given them dominion over the works of your hands. You've put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, and the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. Amen. Directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. 
but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. challenging year for seniors, uh, hasn't it, with the coronavirus, with the disruption to the school schedule, and now as it's hard to celebrate, um, hard to celebrate in a big way, maybe in the way that they may have desired. There might be a little bit of disappointment. We are doing our best at peace to celebrate our, our seniors today, our graduates today, and I wanted to just say thanks be to God for Josiah and Kamari who grew up here at Peace Lutheran Church and have been a huge blessing, continue to be a huge blessing to this community. They are two individuals who I would say put their feet to faith in God. They put faith into action. And um, I'll just put it this way. Josiah has a heart for climate and environmental justice. And Kamari has a special heart for racial and economic justice. In this time when folks are protesting, raising their voices for justice, we can be led by the young people, the young adults in our midst. Josiah and Kamari are a sign of hope to me, and I believe to our church and to our whole society. God is with them. God is at work through them. I look forward now uh, Josiah and Kamari to hearing um, your words as you now reach this milestone of graduation. Thanks be to God for you. Josiah, first, please.
Kamari or Josiah, please start sharing. Oh, okay. Kamari or Josiah. I guess I'm sharing. Everyone can hear me. I don't know how this works. Here. Okay. Go ahead, Kamari. Okay, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, Pastor John asked me and Josiah to share, obviously. So that's what I will be doing today. Um, for as long as I can remember, my education has been extremely important to my family. Kamari, Even, huh? There we go. Okay. Um, even longer than that, my faith has been a significant part of my life. An example of my faith and education intersecting was when I was in the first grade at Man Elementary. So, when I was younger, a very long time ago, elementary schools gave families the option to meet the student's teacher and see the classroom before school officially started. My family took that opportunity and we were able to see my teacher in her classroom before the first day of school. I remember being shown my locker where I would be sitting in the playground. However, one thing that stood out to me the most was that my future first grade teacher was wearing a cross necklace. I knew what the cross meant for me, but I didn't know if it was the same thing to her. <clears throat> so eventually I asked if she was a Christian and she told me that she was. I was amazed and also shocked that my teacher had the same beliefs as me. She was a kind and caring woman, something that I expected from a Christian, but still found to be a delightful surprise. This knowledge led to me and my best friend in the first grade feeling comfortable enough to talk about Jesus and hymns that we enjoyed um, uh, during recess on the playground. That experience with faith and education um, was a literal crossover for me. And I think it was important to the contribution of my enjoyment of school and the way I began to understand how I was going to live out my faith in the academic environment. Like any student, I've had amazing interactions with teachers and less than great interactions with teachers. I've had loving communities like peace, and sometimes I felt that I had no community at all. In fact, when my family moved to Pennsylvania, I never felt so isolated. I felt that all I had was my family and I did not think about God often. My sadness and partially just being in middle school um, made me angry at the world. I definitely, definitely did not enjoy school at first. How could I? I came from a diverse community in all aspects to being the only person of color and more specifically, the only black person in all my classes. There was a situation involving my seventh grade teachers that made me feel like God wasn't looking out for me. It was after a few months of um, me transferring in the middle of the school year that they contacted my parents and had a meeting about me. They claimed that I wasn't giving my all and that during class I was daydreaming about Tacoma. Um, none of those teachers ever thought to talk to me prior to that meeting, and those factual statements were all assumptions because of the way I acted in class. I was quiet and reserved. Um, I wasn't sure what else they expected from a new student who came from across the country in the middle of the school year, and I wondered what I did wrong, but my five white teachers never communicated with me on a personal level. I didn't see it then or acknowledge it then, but God used that situation to ignite something in me. It woke me up and reminded me that people were going to make assumptions of me all my life because of the way I acted and especially because of the way that I looked. I knew this was going to be true in any academic, academic setting I entered. I made it a priority to stand up for the racism and any other injustice I saw and experienced in my own community. This call for justice continues even today and especially today. As I was reading the scripture for the Sunday, I found two verses that resonated with me. The first one was the last sentence of verse 20 of Matthew chapter eight, which says in my NIV translation, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Second, verses three to four, three to four um, of Psalm eight. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, 
What is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them? It has been an extraordinary year for us with many events that have probably made you wonder what is going on? Well, I feel the same way. What is going on? Hello, God, can you hear us? Are you there? These are all questions I've asked almost every day since January. It is hard to feel hope right now. And it is especially hard to feel God's presence. I'm thankful for Matthew chapter 28 and thankful for the closing sentence of the book. A reminder that Jesus is with us always, always. Yes, always, to the very end of the age. He is with us as we are thriving and happy and with us when we are grieving and concerned. When we lost hope and our faith is the size of a mustard seed. He is always there. And God is a caring God. To reiterate, in verse four of Psalm eight, it says, what is mankind that you're mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? Guys, we are mankind. We are human beings. God cares about us and will be with us to the very end of the age. He has crowned us with glory and honor. So of course God is there uh, and he hears us and he loves us. These passages have been a great reminder of God's steadfast love. My senior year of high school has been challenging in the most unique ways, but I'm thankful that I have God, my family and this community that loves me and cares for me. As for the future, um, I will be attending the University of Washington, however that works out. And I will be studying environmental science and terrestrial resource management. Um, I want to congratulate every graduate of 2020, whether that's a graduation from kindergarten or law school, it all matters and um, <laughs> we should celebrate you. Lastly, I never know how to conclude my sermons or whatever, however, I don't know how to yeah, conclude what I share. But today I want to end with this statement. Black Lives Matter, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, period. Okay, thank you. We are having challenges bringing in Josiah today. Um, if, if there's a way that Josiah appears and we can connect him in in a few moments, that will happen. I'm gonna continue onward. And this is what we will do if we're not able to connect via Zoom with Josiah, we'll have him make a video and then we'll post that for all of us to, uh, to see. Thank you, Kamari. Thank you for sharing. Um, and. I think we've got Josiah, do we? Okay, this is a, a time of patience. Okay, Josiah, you can start. Thank you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, Josiah, you can start. Thank you. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Just X. Yeah. yeah. What's going on? So now you can speak. Okay. Yes, Hi. Go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Please you can hear me. go. Okay. Um, so Pastor John asked Kamari and me to share about how God has been present and working in our lives. And uh, the way I've seen God uh, present for me um, is there are a few ways through the people of peace, the hilltop community, and through God's creation and nature. Um, so the 
among the people of peace, a few in particular stand out to me. Um, Craig Cogger uh, being a scientist who's concerned about environmental and social justice, um, being on having the opportunity to go on mission trips with him. And uh, one memory that I uh, that stands out for me uh, of him is digging a ditch together on the mission trip to the Yakima Reservation. Um, I've he's one of the people at Peace who I've really seen God working through. Um, another are uh, others are Ben and Lisa Flesher. Um, the I've really um, Ben's sense of humor, but also seriousness is really um, uh, I've found that I, I think that is sorry. Um, there so Ben's sense of humor, but also um, serious this in leadership and sense of hospitality from both of them and Lisa's cooking. <laughs> I have, uh, that's, there's some of the other people I've seen. Wait, what happened? Can you still hear me? Sorry, Zoom is not working. Can you still hear me? says I was signed out. Okay, good. Sorry about that. Um, so then through the, um, another place I've seen God working in my life is through the, I am. Uh, another place I've seen God working in my life is through the Hilltop community. Um, I went to elementary school at McCarver and being a student at McCarver, it was, um, it was normal for me that I was, that there were, that not everyone was white and that everyone was from different backgrounds and situations. Um, so then when I went to uh, a one day a week program at Lowell Elementary School, um, I was completely shocked that there was one person in my class who was not white and that everybody was bringing their own lunch, not getting school lunch. Um, so I think uh, being in the Hilltop community was really good for me to see that God works through everyone, not just people who are like me. And another place that helped reinforce that was Second Cycle. Uh, we had a, we have a huge range of situations and backgrounds that our customers come from. Um, but the being there and interacting with people from all sorts of different uh, circumstances has taught me that uh, it's to not see a person for where they're, what situation they're in, but for what they can do or the person they are. Some of the very nicest people I've met at Second Cycle were from the most challenging situations or backgrounds. Um, and the third way, the third major way that I've seen God working in my life is through nature and God's creation. Um, I one, one of the places I felt that the most was at Luther Haven and Shoshone. Um, the, their camp, the Luther Haven is a camp in Idaho that is, um, their goal is to connect youth with God and nature. And I've really felt that there. I've been there almost every summer of my life. And I am going to spend this summer there too, volunteering. Um, Another way uh, that I um, that I feel God working in my life and through me a little bit um, in the 
area of caring for God's creation is through bikes. I, um, I just think it's really incredible that something can be such a good transportation solution and also so much fun. Um, and that um, I think being able to get more people on bikes and away from cars is possibly one way that I can work to care for God's creation. Um, that's, those are three of the major ways that I've felt God working through my life. Um, and I want to thank the whole peace community for making me, uh, peace will always be, it'll always feel like home to me. And thank the people of peace and Hilltop for that. Thanks be to God for Kamari and Josiah and their, their sharing. We're gonna sing a, a song now and then we'll be back with a blessing of our graduates. celebrate our uh, graduates today and I'm going to in a moment read the names of graduates connected to Peace Lutheran Church uh, before I do that I want to take a moment and just highlight the work of Peace Community Center in these moments now as uh, throughout our nation uh, racial and economic inequities in our systems and institutions are being brought out, um, are being revealed, those inequities that have been there for a really long time, Peace Community Center is standing in the gap and is coming alongside um, folks of color and uh, folks of low income backgrounds, walking with these students through school, up all the way to graduation and beyond, post-secondary um, education and training. At, as these young people then move into living wage jobs and can support their families and give back to their communities, uh, that is the vision of, of Peace Community Center. So if you are looking for a way to work for justice, support 
Peace Community Center. That is one of the ways right here, our partnership of Peace Lutheran Church and Peace Community Center of, of doing God's work in our midst. Okay, so here are the graduates connected to the church and the center. High school graduates, Josiah Anderson, graduating from IDEA, will attend University of Montana. Destiny Bergevin, graduate of FOSS, will attend Clover Park Technical College. Kamari Carroll, Mount Tahoma grad, will attend UW Seattle, and Kamari also is receiving her associate degree from TCC. Uh, Zygen uh, Christensen, who is graduating from SAMI, will attend Bates. Caleb Correa, graduating from FOSS, will attend UW Seattle. Man Dangas, who is graduating from Stadium, will attend UW Seattle. Harlan Estrada, graduate of Stadium, will attend Western. Talina Hall, graduate of Wilson, will attend Bates. Imani Hawkins, Stadium grad, will attend St. Martin's, Martins, and Imani also has received her associate degree from TCC. Francis Ramirez Auso, grad of Stadium, will attend TCC. Isis Sapp, graduate of FOSS, will attend a College of Art and Design in 2021. Joseph Saar, a Wilson grad, will enter the workforce. Cassius Threats, Stadium grad, will be enlisting in the Navy. Adaya Walker, a SOTA grad, will attend Ohio State University in 2021. Anuncia Willis, Stadium grad, will enter the workforce. Erica Young, a SOTA grad, will attend Central. Riliana Zavala, Stadium grad, will attend UW Tacoma. Want to highlight our college graduates connected to peace. Kelly Olson uh, is graduating from PLU with a BA in sociology and pre-med. Marlene Sawhill, a graduate of Boston College with a BA in economics and a minor in international studies. This is the moment for me to say we probably missed somebody there. Um, okay, Catherine Lundgren, uh, her master's in education. Praise God for you, Catherine, uh, and, uh, and others. Um, go ahead and put their names in the comment section. We will be sending a, a grad graduation card to each one of them from Peace Lutheran Church. Please uh, know that we are celebrating and we are praying for you. I wanted to say one thing here. I have a rock here, I have a stone, and the ancient Romans, when they were making their roads all over the Roman Empire, would put up a, an obelisk, a stone obelisk, every mile. And it was meant to be an ending and a beginning. And I shared this with our Hilltop Scholar graduates at their graduation event. So that when you came to this stone, which they called a milestone, you knew I've just come another mile. And I can see that there are milestones up ahead. In the Bible, when the ancient Israelites traveled around, they would occasionally put up a pile of stones. And in one place we hear that they set up a stone and they called it Ebenezer. They would make an altar at different locations. And Ebenezer means stone of helps, recognizing the Lord has brought us to this place. We have come this far by faith. So graduates, I hope for you, you recognize this moment today, this graduation as a milestone, that you look back and you go, wow, I've come a long way to this place and I, I'm looking forward into the future. But I hope you will make this milestone also an Ebenezer. I hope you will recognize that you haven't come here by yourselves, that you've got a whole lot of people supporting you and journeying with you, that you've got teachers and administrators, you've got your parents, you've got family members, you've got the church, you've got tutors and, and mentors. So many people along your way have helped you to this moment. Look back. Give thanks. Most of all, give thanks that God has brought you here. You have come this far by faith. 
and God will lead you into the future. So make this milestone an Ebenezer and give thanks to God and trust God to lead you into the future. I wanna also uh, let you know that Taylor McCarthy uh, is graduating with a BA in communication from Capilano. Uh, and I believe that is it. Okay, those are the extras that I have heard about that we did not include and we're, we're sorry about that. Uh, so let's have a word of blessing now as we think about all our graduates. And I wish they were here, but imagine them in your minds. If you're next to one, please give that person a hug um, or text that person now. And if you can raise hands, a blessing. God, we pray your blessing on all who are graduating from degree programs it, at this time. Thank you for bringing them to this point, to this milestone. May this be an Ebenezer a moment to give thanks for all who have helped along the way. God, a moment to thank you for all the blessings and the supports you give us in life. And be with these graduates, God, as they go into an uncertain future. Gift them, give them strength and courage. Show them the way. Help them use the gifts that you've given them to, for your glory and for the community. Help them to serve and to lead in ways that advance your values out of faith and justice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, it's time for us to enter into a time of prayers of the people. And so I'm going to start us off here, and then Lee will, will take over and lift up the prayers that you have put forth. In the comment section on Facebook, if you're live today, will you please begin to put thanksgivings and prayer concerns down? Um, I want to begin uh, this time of prayer again by taking a moment to honor the lives of those tragically taken recently in acts of racial violence and adding the name of Manuel Ellis from Tacoma. So please, as you listen to me say these names, take a moment of silence for deep reflection, lifting them, their families to God and asking God to, to change, to change our community, our society for the better. Manuel Ellis, Ahmad Arbery, Brianna Taylor, Sean Reed, Tony McDade, George Floyd. Jesus said, remember, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Every week we send out with the announcements a prayer list, and I want to highlight for you the first few petitions on that prayer list. I encourage you to print this out, and if it's helpful, post it in your home so that you can lift up prayers for all the individuals and situations that are listed here throughout the week so that we are a praying community. Please um, know that these are the first few petitions. We pray for deep reflection and acknowledgement of prejudices in ourselves and racism in our systems and institutions, for wisdom to intentionally act to call out and dismantle racism in all its forms and work for justice in laws and policies in our nation. Lord, have mercy. We pray for all affected by the coronavirus pandemic, especially those who grieve the death of loved ones, the ill and families, medical professionals, people who are working on the front lines, public health workers, government and agencies working to stop this health threat. 
our congregation and our community, and especially for communities of color disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. We pray for all in these days, in this season, who are hurting and feeling weighed down. And now let me add some other prayer concerns. Uh, we want to give thanks to God for our graduates today and all students now as we near the end of this school year in the final push in, in this a very challenging environment of learning that we're in now online. I want to lift up to you folks who are grieving the loss of loved ones, Brendan Nelson and family at the tragic shooting death of Brendan's nephew in Tacoma on Friday night. Prayers for comfort and strength for Brendan and family in this very difficult time. I want to lift up Ron Green, Ron and Sharon Green and family at the death of Pauline Green. Pauline died early this morning, 87 years old, longtime member of Peace Lutheran Church, president of the congregation at one time. We give thanks to God for her life, and we pray for their family, for comfort and hope, and for our church. I want to pray for Carol Shelton, who fell recently and received some bruising, and for all who are in need of God's healing care. And now, Lee, would you please lift up uh, other prayer concerns? Uh, prayer concerns that we've gotten. Um, let's see. Let me go back to the beginning. Uh, let's see. Praise. This is from Sandra. That Abigail will. Uh, that uh, praise the Abigail, who is going to get her surgery, yeah, her surgery, and a prayer for Sandra, for you, Sandra, um, struggling with depression and sorrow. Uh, thanks, thanks from Joanne Wilson for many peaceful rallies and protests this week. Thankful that the true message is being spread throughout the world. Pray, for, pray that change would come soon. Lynn, let's pray for Lynn. Um, she has a prayer for her son, Christopher, experiencing deep depression this time. And uh, thanks to God for a great niece. This is you, Gail, for a great niece. Um, Jamie's saying graduating from Utah, and a great nephew graduating from high school, Joe Claire in California. Um, Sally says prayers of Thanksgiving for our nephew Will, who will be who will graduate from high school on Friday. And thanks also that God will continue to keep us healthy. Um, and he says prayers for Brenda's loss. A family member. Um, Barbara Hartness says prayer or our niece in Maryland is being induced. She's having a boy. It's going to be Russell Barron. What a blessing in addition to our family. Emma, prayers for courageous protesters. Sally, prayers for our community to face reality and get to work on building a just and loving community right here in Tacoma. Um, Malcolm, thanks for God's faithfulness to the graduates, their families, and the communities they come from. Prayers for the soul of our country, that we would have the courage to truly examine our communal life. Uh, Joanne, thankful for the small businesses who have survived the quarantine as well as we move into phase two. Prayer for phase two. And all of us, um, thankful. Emma is thankful for Pauline's work and life at peace. And we pray for, um, as Pastor John did, um, 
they're on and share with me the death of their mom. Um, mothers, James prays, mothers of two friends, one with cancer and one in a coma. Uh, Sharon also in prayers for all of us who are not um, POC to do the work. POC? People of color to do the work. That we would do the work. Um, Barbara Hartness prayers that uh, COVID 19 will be on the decline and for the community safety in these times of protesting. Uh, Gail, my friend, and Hannah Moore struggling with depression due to COVID isolation. Siri, thanksgiving for those sharing action steps toward unlearning and dismantling racism, for our perseverance and perseverance in and commitment to doing this work. Uh, Carrie Hedrick says, Penny would like prayers for Aunt Dory and healing for mom um, for Carrie's foot. Um, Allison, thank you for my wonderful niece, um, Elena Mo, I graduated high school after long health issues. Continue to bring those through and people on Facebook can lift those up. Pray for Brendan and his family during this difficult time. Um, ability to use Antonio says the ability to, you, to utilize technology to view church. Um, gladness is, says glad to reconnect. We hold these all in our hearts. And these are heavy, you know, important. Lord, we let them to you. Um, God, continue to bless us and keep us. Christ, be a light for our lives. Spirit, guide us, especially during this time. And I have a, a prayer from Walter Brueggemann. It's an excerpt from um, one of the prayers he wrote for um, the Pentecost season to make things new that never were. We name you wind, power, force, and then third person. We name you and you blow, blow hard, Blow cold, blow hot, blow strong, blow gentle, blow new. Blowing the wind out of nothing to abundance. Blowing the church out of despair to new life. Blowing to make things new that never were new. So blow this day wind, blow here and there, power, blow even us, force, brush us beyond ourselves, brush us beyond our hopes, brush us beyond our fears until we enact your newness in the world. Come, come, Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let's pray together now in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please know that these, this is our Lord's meal, and everybody's welcome to share that meal. If you have bread, grape juice, wine in your home, take an opportunity now to share the loving presence of Jesus with us. Um, and please know that God gathers us in our different locations today, fills us with God's love in Jesus, and sends us out to share that love, to embody that love in the world as Jesus guides us. Amen. in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace.
May God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may God, our Creator, who has given us all life and gifted us all as human beings, and Jesus, who loves us with all he is, even to his death, and by God's power shows the power of life over all other powers, and the Holy Spirit breathing in us life and giving us faith and sending us out to serve. May God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bless you now and always. Amen. We're going to sing our sending song now.